Hey, greetings YouTube. Welcome to Vacuum Saved, the vlog. First thing we're going to talk about today is the Kirby. Now, I did a whole series on restoring this Kirby, but I want to show you what it looks like after it's been restored and it sat for about a year. Now, it's really unfortunate, but the sad reality of using aluminum is it does tarnish and does oxidize. And you can see that the oxidization has started to happen. I have not applied anything to try to stop it from oxidizing. This is just the way it is. And it's been stored, you know, away from water and really in good condition. So it's sad to see that my polish job is starting to look like that. But I thought I'd show you kind of what that looks like after a year. And anybody who's polished Kirby's or whatnot has probably experienced this. I would like to know if anybody has experimented with putting like beeswax on it or a clear coat or how that's been in terms with your Kirby. So comment below about that. Yep, they did it. They made a cordless vacuum. And this thing is huge. Can we zoom out now? Anyways, this thing, uh, typical cordless stuff. I really don't like this machine. And give me an idea for my arm comparison. It's very large and unwieldy. And the buttons are aluminum on the top for some reason. But the whole machine is very so-so quality. And of course, they added fake carbon fiber. Eh, just not super happy with this machine. It, uh, it stalls on my carpet. It doesn't work on my carpet upstairs. So this is kind of an interesting machine because it's really for hard floor. And I talk a lot about how I don't like spinning brushes on hard floor. Though, if you have to do it, this is probably the better way to do it. You have areas for big objects to go in. You have a squeegee or a brush in the back, and then you can see the brushes, and then there's lots of room for a big object uh, to fit in there and then go into the machine. So not horrible nozzle design shape, but horrible execution with a low torque motor and no suction relief or height adjustment on this, of course. This is just more e-waste, unfortunately. And I'm not trying to generate e-waste here at the channel, but it's hard to call this sort of product anything else. Let me know what your thoughts are on this particular stick vacuum, or if you've seen it advertised or heard anything about it, I'd like to know too. Now, Chance, if you're watching, don't flip your shit over this canister. Uh, this is a Simplicity Clutch? Clutch? Anyways, it's a simplicity. The reason I'm mispronouncing it, the cinch, cinch, that's what it is. Um, this is a machine from 2011. And this that's kind of like the end of when this was made. This is like the last version. But this was similar to the Recar Pristine, and there was a Recar model that was red like this, where it comes with the smaller head. And this head is a copy of a Vissel work head, but stands up by itself. This power head, is very low quality, unfortunately. But its feature set is rich, and this solved a lot of problems with the 217 style of head that was being sold at the time next to this. In fact, let's take a look at this versus a 217. Of course, the biggest problem with the 217 is it doesn't stand up by itself. And that is the bottom of the 217. So this solves that problem. Also, it has a bumper, which the 217 did not have, and a light that it added. The other thing, look at the bottom of this. Now these start, let me move this, uh, start to look very similar with this kind of dinky roller. These are much stiffer bristles than the 217. They both have a squeegee. They both have uh, a coin-operated screws. So again, very similar, except this would have a pigtail and some circuitry. And all sorts of things would plague this nozzle to make them stop making it. Now, oddly enough, this has the Tacone USA sticker on it, but <laughs> let's take a look at the bottom side and see. Well, you can see that that's globally outsourced components. Again, love the USA advertising they used to do. It's a shame that it was not in the least bit true. When we look at the rest of the canister here, we can see uh, it is a 
made in China product. So again, they put this big American sticker on the machine. They put this big American sticker on the machine and then you can clearly see it will focus you fuck. There you go, you can see made in China. So anyways, that aside, I'm happy to have this. And this was given to me by a friend who was out of state and uh, and a friend of his was tired of it, gave it to him. So anyway, so I'm really happy to have this. I'm gonna do a whole video on this. You're gonna see a lot of new product videos coming out on the channel. I have a whole bunch of machines I need to review and get out of the way before it becomes a conflict of interest. And um, we're not really going to announce why that is, but you're gonna see a lot of new machines I'm gonna review on the channel before I get back to the vintage stuff, unfortunately. And those are just going to be, I'm gonna try to bane them out as fast as possible and you know keep the quality up, of course. But I wanna make sure I review them before again it becomes a conflict of interest for me. So you're going to see a lot of Lindhouse, SIBO uh, reviews from me uh, coming up. So if you like those products, you know, definitely go ahead and ring that bell on the main channel. So back to this machine, because I, I just kind of want to show it because it's really weird. This also was one of my most expensive machines to get filters for. I had to get, there's a HEPA filter here, it was super weird. Uh, how that is. I had to get this HEPA filter and I had to pay a retail price for it because uh, they don't make it generic. They don't, this is something you can only get from Tacconi and it's hard to get in a special order. So that was like a $40 filter. Uh, again, a lot for something made in China. So what I like about this versus the uh, Recar is when we turn the power button on, these are like a blue light. The Recars were like a dim, um, incandescent bulb in there. Then you have your full bag check indicator there. And then you have this weird ass CAS pump handle. In fact, see if the full bag will even work. Nope. I can open that up and calibrate it, but I don't wish to. As far as the tool set goes. Oh, you can hear the creaking. Um, they gave you these little tiny tools. It's kind of upholstery dusting brush combo. Nice for bookshelves, not for much, much else. Then of course they gave this wonderful three-in-one dusting brush. And this was kind of a Tom Gasco uh, idea why they did this. I really do like this tool. Um, not too much of a fan of bristles on this side. I wish this was slick like an Electrolux tool. But anyways, very kind of cool, cool with that. This also has the updated wand, which is this big bulky thing on this small little nozzle. Let's go ahead and uh, suck some stuff up with it. Let's suck some of these Rice Krispies up on this. While we're running this, I want you to look how dim the LED bulbs are in this nozzle now. So that's my little blue Simplicity canister. I hope you've enjoyed. This really is something I'm excited to have in the collection. These were so rare back in the day. There weren't a lot of these sold. And here we are over a decade later. There's hardly any of these around. So very collectible, very cool. And it's a shame that Tacconi didn't update this design. Uh, and it's really just a shame what happened to Tacconi as a company as a whole, I think I have a whole video on that, one of the first ones on the channel. So, but regardless of that history, I am glad to have this. All right, I have a SIBO H nozzle, which you've seen on the channel before. But what you haven't seen is this adapter that SIBO makes. Let's see if I can even get it to come off for you. Okay, which is 
just this part with the pigtail on the end. And this allows you to use a SIPO nozzle with a uh, non-direct connect wand. Very cool. You can't actually use the direct connect SIBO wand with this nozzle. It won't fit. The electrical plug is actually in a slightly different position. So I am really excited to have the SIBO ETH. I'm going to try and put a card about me repairing the ETH. There wasn't a lot to do. This doesn't have a swivel neck, but it has a new brush in it. There's also no height adjustment on this nozzle, but it is a beast of a commercial nozzle. If you ever had one of these on the end of a Patriot. And I am super excited to have it, even though I can only use it down here in my basement. All right, I've put some pet hair and some Rice Krispies down. I just want you to hear and see this thing in action because it's truly amazing. So that's my ETH nozzle on the end of a central vacuum. It is quite the beast. It wants to like walk away from you when you're using it. In fact, it really does the, the orc thing where it just kind of walks away, you know, from you like so. It's just so aggressive. It's also extremely quiet and pleasant to hear when it's running. It's really a shame it doesn't have a swivel neck, but it steers pretty good for not having a swivel neck. Now, fun fact, the SIBO Disco uses the motor from this thing. So, kind of a little trivia on it. Maybe one day I'll do a review on this, but until then, I just kind of thought I'd just show it off by itself. Well, it's not story time yet, kiddos, but I did manage to finally get one of the 100 years of Mila dealer books and to show how kind of hard this is to get notice there's no UPC there's no barcode on here this is not a book that was really ever officially published it's only given to dealers so I'm happy to have it I've been looking for one of these for a couple years so I'm glad to have it unfortunately this one's a little bit scratched but you know for a book that's over 20 years old I can't really complain so this goes over all the history with Mila and like real history, like their butter churners, their washing machines, all that sort of stuff. There's no mention of World War II in this book, which is always interesting that they choose to n not really mention that. I don't blame them. I'm sure something disgusting happened they don't want to talk about. Anyway, so as we go into here, it's just super cool, this like timeline history book. And this was one of the, my favorite things I think I ever, ever, ever had as a, a Mila dealer. So I was really glad to have it. They're hard to come by. So if you can get a copy, I would highly recommend it. And just look at that, 1977, that machine. It's just gorgeous. And, you know, the appliances are cool to see, especially the dishwashers. Dishwashers just do it for me. We have this machine. So there are several machines in this book that I have. Um, and that's kind of, I don't know how long. Well, I'm not used to doing books here on camera, so you're going to have to excuse uh, my klutziness. But it's just really, really cool. So we get into, where is it? Ah, this is the page I want to show you all. This has that yellow Mila. There's no speed control on that, and that's the key. A lot of these pictures are German-only machines. It also has that interesting nozzle that I really like. It's like a gulper tool that Mila made that they discontinued. Really cool to see that 1995 uh, S300 series, and then they have the staff there on the other page. So that is the Mila book that I have, and I am glad to have saved this piece of history. And I'm going to, of course, put this with my Mila. Uh, and there's all their offices and stuff. My, the rest of my Mila collection. There was a CD there, hmm, or DVD. I wonder what was on that. So this book came in like a sleeve originally that matched this color cover again. Those are all lost and gone. I wonder what was in the back. 
I am going to have to ask a friend of mine who works at a dealer that should have one of these around. Anyways, uh, so that's that. Maybe, maybe if you guys really want to see this, I can't scan it because it's just how thick it is. But maybe we could do like a story time or something one day on camera. That's a little bit better production than me just sitting here. Uh, trying to see if this is in focus from, you know, a meter and a half away. But anyways, so thanks for tuning in to the vlog. I really appreciate you guys watching these things. I appreciate you guys liking, subscribing. And I want to thank our patrons uh, for making this happen. I am currently on the fence whether or not we should delete our Patreon page or we should continue going and use the Patreon page uh, for the second channel. Those donations really do help a lot for camera equipment, lights, SD cards, editing software, and all sorts of other costs that just come up, including fixing up machines and buying new machines for review. So anyways, uh, comment below, especially if you're Patreon, if you like seeing our Patreon content, uh, or if you think there's not enough or there's too much, let me know. I want to really hear your thoughts whether or not I should continue Patreon in the comments below. So that's all I have for you today. There are some other big things in the works, again, that I can't really talk about right now, but I'm really happy uh, about what's going on, again, in the works. So hit that subscribe button, check out our Discord server, all the links in the description. There's always good stuff in the description of my videos, so if you've been watching our videos for any, any given time, make sure you check out the description. Have yourself a great day.